Hi, everybody. So since it's one o'clock, I'd say we'll start. Welcome to my presentation um, about the German language. And today I'm going to talk about the question, is life too short to learn German? Um, as a German native speaker, of course, I have to say no. And I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Barbara Greff. I am from Austria, from Salzburg. Yes, Austrians do speak proper German as well. I teach German as a foreign language to international business people, and I also provide intercultural competence training. I'd like to guide you through the topics, to what I'm going to talk about today. So the first uh, part will be, I'll give you three reasons why you should learn German. Uh, the then I'll move on to the more practical part. And I'd like to introduce you to three important verbs. At least I find that those three verbs are very important because once you know those three verbs, you can say quite a few things. And then we combine those verbs with the W questions and then you can create questions. And that's basically half the battle. Then you basically speak German. Then we're gonna talk about the scary topic of the Daddy Das articles. And, and I'm going to tell you um, one strategy that I use for my students and um, what I think is a good way to learn the articles. Then um, we, I'm going to show you that German is a fun language and I'm going to talk about Lego words, which I call them Lego words, but the actual term is compound nouns. And then I'm going to give you some like general advice and strategies on how to best learn German. And then I would like to finish with a German language quiz. <clears throat> and um, if you have any questions, feel free um, to either interrupt me if you feel like they are really important questions, or please ask them at the end. There will be enough time to ask questions at the end. Okay, three reasons, three good reasons why should you learn German? Um, well, one good reason is there are 90 million native speakers. So German is not just an official language in one country, but German is an official language in Austria, Germany, Switzerland and Luxembourg. So once you learn this language, um, you have th uh, four countries where you can practice the language in. Um, it's the most widely spoken native language in Europe. And it also ranks among the language with most native speakers worldwide. Um, another good um, reason is that for English native speakers, it should be relatively easy to learn the language because English and German both belong to the West Germanic group of the Indo-European language family. So there are thousands of words which are closely related for example, so the German word for garden is garten, water is Wasser, apple, the German word is apfel. So I think you see what I mean. Some words are even the same, like the word tunnel means tunnel. So they're very similar. Okay, another, sorry. Um, learning German is of course a good uh, idea from a linguistic point of view but also in terms of economic opportunity, networking potential and cultural gains. So Germany has the fourth largest economy worldwide and it is also the largest European trading partner with the US. Um, and if you'd like to study in Austria, Germany, you need to know that the university is for free. So it's a very good idea to learn German because then you can study for free. And uh, the universities rank among the most the best ones worldwide. Okay, I see there are some questions already. Yes, in some parts of Belgium, it's also um, an official language, very true. Okay, let's move on to the more practical part. There are three important verbs I'd like to introduce you to. So um, I'd like to start with sign. Sign is to be. So, Sein is a bit irregular, so you conjugate it away. Ich bin, du bist, er, sie, es, ist, wir sind, ihr seid, sie sind. And then this the last one, the C, is you formal. 
it is capitalized so it's capitalization is not optional in german you really have to capitalize certain words and the c with a capital s means it's the formal part yeah so it means you are in a formal way so that's to be let's give you i'm going to give you some examples so ich bin barbara i'm barbara if you want to then ask a question all you have to do is start with the verb put the subject second and then the rest follows after so bist du barbara are you barbara ich bin aus österreich i am from austria if you want to ask somebody again you start with the verb bist du aus österreich so that way you can create yes or no questions which means questions where the answers can only be yes or no. Ich bin hungrig. Bist du hungrig? So, ich bin hungrig. Hungrig is, again, sounds very similar like in another English word. So, I am hungry. Yeah. One rule in German, because as I said earlier, same language family as English. If it sounds similar to an English word, it's very likely that it has the same meaning. So, you can always kind of guess what it means. So, bist du hungrig? Are you hungry? Okay, let's move on to the second. Uh, excuse me, uh, yeah. but why bin becomes bis there? Sorry? It's like, yeah. like a, ich, ich bin, then when you have to like ask a question, it becomes bist, I think. Yeah. Because we, here we're saying, are you hungry? Yeah. So, Bist would be for you, bin is for I am hungry. Oh, okay, so I'm sorry. I thought it was the same word. <laughs> so if you want to ask yourself, so you can, of course you can ask yourself, but you would, if you want to ask yourself, am I hungry? You can then say, bin ich hungrig? Yes. But I thought it would make more sense if you ask somebody else, are you hungry? So you would say, Bist du hungrig, yeah? Actually, it is uh, very logical, especially if somebody wants to go on a diet or think that uh, he's like a fat, and then like uh, he just thinks that he's hungry, but when actually he's not hungry, he's just maybe bored. <laughs> so yeah, maybe. I mean, yes, you can ask yourself these questions, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if we go back here at our chart, so that would be here, du bist. That would be the you are, yeah? Yeah, of course you can ask yourself, you could say, am I hungry? Yeah, bin ich hungrig? Okay, let's move on to haben. Haben to have, yeah? Haben changes for the second and the third person. So ich habe, du hast, the B changes to an S. Er, sie, es, hat. Wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben and sie haben. Again, the C with the capital S is formal, yeah? Okay, there are some questions. Just give me a second, I'll ask. Hast du Hunger is actually much more common. Yes, it is very common. Um, you can say, ich habe Hunger. Same in German. There are two ways of asking, bin, ich bin hungrig oder bist du hungrig? Ich bin hungrig means I'm hungry. Ich habe hunger literally translates to I have hunger, same as in French, similar construct or Italian, similar construct, I have hunger. Um, it's, it's a personal preference whether you want to say Ich bin hungrig or Ich habe hunger. It's both the same, doesn't really matter. Uh, can you put the slide back because I want to uh, copy from for uh, to be with, because this oh. one yeah 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 that one sorry yeah so um if you can i'm gonna write that in the chat so ich habe um i think i need to change it to all um so let me know is are you done with it or uh just zin, zin. yeah that's it okay, okay. So um, let's have a look at some examples. So ich habe einen Hund. Hund, I have a dog. So if you think of the old English word hound, similar meaning, similar hund, hound. Yeah, it means I have a dog. 
if you want to ask somebody then, hast du einen Hund? Yeah, do you have a dog? If you want to flirt in German, I thought this might be a useful sentence. Du hast schöne Augen, you have beautiful eyes. And then again, if you want to ask a question, do you have time today? Hast du heute Zeit? Wir haben Kinder, we have children. Habt ihr Kinder, do you have children? So again, you start with the verb, then you put the subject second, and then the last one, um, everything else comes afterwards. The next verb I think is really useful and important is möchten, because that way you can say what you would like and you can ask people. So, ich möchte, du möchtest, er sie es möchte, wir möchten, ihr möchtet, sie möchten, and again the formal sie möchten. So let's have a look at some examples. Ich möchte einen Kaffee. I'd like a coffee. Möchtest du einen Kaffee? You can ask somebody, would you like a coffee? You just start with the verb. Wir möchten bestellen, very important phrase when you go to a restaurant. Bestellen means to order. So wir möchten bestellen means we would like to order. Or maybe the waiter will ask you, möchten Sie bestellen? Would you like to order? Ich möchte die Schuhe probieren. I'd like to try the shoes on. Möchten Sie die Schuhe probieren? Yeah. Again, you just switch positions. You start with the verb. If you don't have any questions um, on the verbs, I want to move on now to the W questions. Because once we know the verbs and the W questions, we can create lots of questions. Um, that are really useful. Let's move on to W questions. The W questions are called W questions because this, they all start with a W, very simple. So the first one, V. V is how. V gates. You've probably all heard the question, V gates. V gates means how are you? Literally, we are asking, how is it going? The next one, was. Was is what? So, was ist das? What is this? And then, wer. Wer might be a bit confusing for English native speakers because wer is not where, it's who. Yeah. So, you're asking for a person and not for a place. So, wer ist das? Who is that? Wo. Again, this is a false friend with English. So, wo is not who. Wo means where. So, wo bist du? Where are you? That's asking for a person's location. So if we want to know where a person is from, we would ask in English, where from? So we have two words we need. In German, we just have one. So we put where and from together. Woher? So woher kommst du? Where do you come from? Woher always is the direction um, towards you. So woher? And then the opposite would be wohin, which is where to. So wohin gehst du would mean where are you going, yeah? So if somebody would stand up now, if I would stand up now, you could say to me and leave, you could say to me wohin gehst du, where are you going? And then the last two, warum, why? So some people might ask you, warum lernst du Deutsch? Why are you learning German? And then we have wann is when. Wann hast du Zeit? When do you have time? Yeah. Okay, let's combine some of those W questions now with some of the verbs we've learned. So, woher bist du? Woher, where from? Bist du? Where are you from? Wer ist das? Who is this? Or are you asking, wo bist du? Where are you? Was möchtest du? What would you like? Um, so I can see in the chat that somebody asked like W sounds like V. Yeah, woher. Very important when it comes to pronunciation. So um, the W sound in German is called labiodental. So which means your teeth touch your lower lip. Yeah, so it's not like the English sound where it's a w, w, a Y in English your teeth don't touch your lips when you pronounce this letter. But in German, your teeth 
touch your lower lip. So you'd have to say, wer, woher, as you can see here, wo, yeah? So touch your lower lips. Let's move on to a very scary topic now, the German articles. I'm sure you've seen, so we have Daddy Das, yeah? Those are the three articles and we need to, unfortunately, we cannot just ignore the articles. We need to learn the articles, yeah? So, um, I'm sure you've seen all those memes about German article um, because um, the articles are quite tricky to learn. Um, when we learn the German article, when you learn a new noun, you always should learn it with the articles, yeah? And of course there are certain rules. Um, so when we look at der, so, there is a natural gender in German. So, um, männliche Personen, which means all men are always going to be der. Same for professions, yeah. So, there are two versions in German for every job, or for most jobs, there's a German, a, a masculine version and a feminine version. So, for example, der Arzt, doctor, die Ärztin, female doctor, yeah. Another rule is that alcohol, yeah. So, alcohol all alcoholic drinks are masculine. So except beer, beer is neutral. So um, der Schnaps, der Wein, der Whisky, der Gin, always masculine. Weekdays, so der Montag, der Dienstag, der Mittwoch, always masculine. Monate, month, so der Juni, der Juli, der August, all the month masculine. Jahreszeiten, literally times of the year, which is seasons, so der Winter, der Sommer, der Herbst. And then there are certain endings. So if you see a noun that has this ending, um, it has the article der. Of course, there are always exceptions to these rules. Um, then same again, as I already said, so um, female person, so it gets the D article. And again, there's a, a list of um, endings. If you see a noun with these endings, um, then it has the article D. Um, das substantivierte Verben. So if you turn a verb into a noun and diminutive, so um, diminutive, you have it in certain languages like Spanish or Italian, when you make um, words smaller, then it's also neutral. So if you like to learn those rules, then um, yes, you of course welcome to learn these rules, but lots of people have a hard time to remember all these endings. So one strategy I always tell uh, my students is start with colors, yeah? So choose three colors and then stick to those colors. So I always use blue for masculine D, um, red for D, and green for das. And then when you make notes, um, stick to those three colors. Also very helpful, buy those little post-its in three colors. It's very helpful when you learn um, terms like furniture um, or in your kitchen, you can put it everywhere. So every word, for example, der Tisch, which is a table, put a blue post-it on it. That way, uh, you constantly connect the object with the color, which is easier than to remember that it's masculine. Plus another strategy that I like um, to use is create a memory palace for your articles. So a memory palace, this is a very common strategy that lots of people use in order to remember things. So, um, like use your apartment or another house or a place you know very well, pick three rooms and in your head, paint the doors of those three rooms in those three colors that you cho you'd chosen for the articles. And then when you, in your head, open the door to this room, you see this whole world that only exists of words that start with dare. Yeah, so for example, the blue room could be something like that. You open the door to this room, you see a blue sky, der Himmel, masculine, der Berg, mountain, der See, lake, which is all masculine. Maybe then you can 
create this story a bit further. So on top of this mountain, there's a man eating cheese, both mask words with a masculine article. So der Mann, der Käse. You do the same for all th three rooms. So red room, there is a street in there. I chose die Kuh because feminine, um, die Frau, so I'm touching the cow here. Um, whatever works for you, create the, this memory palace. Or the green, then das, so a child, das Kind. Das Gras, grass, yeah. Maybe the child is munching bread, das Brot. Um, so whenever you learn a new noun, you put it in those rooms and you somehow try and create a little story that works for you. That way it's much easier for your brain to remember the articles. Otherwise, um, it might be um, difficult to remember the articles because there is, it's not like that a bottle is deflasher because it somehow has um, a feminine shape, yeah? So it's easier, take the, take the object, take the noun, put it in the room, create a little story. Okay, let's move on uh, now to um, one part I think is always really fun for people who learn German because the compound nouns, we have the compounds noun, nouns or I like to call them Lego words, yeah? So um, because Lego words, you can put them together like Lego bricks. Um, so as you can see, there are lots of um, little memes online, you can see. Um, so a snail with no house, yes, very logical. German is a very logical language. So it's a naked snail, a Nacktschnecke. A uh, flying thing, so a fly stuff is a Flugzeug or gloves, yeah. Cover your hands, look like shoes, handschuhe, yeah, so hand shoes, gloves. Or a Fahrstuhl, yeah, a driving chair, literally. Or a Schildkröte, a shield toad. There are all kinds of these fun words. So, um, and Lego words, lots of nouns that work with lots of other nouns. So Zahn, for example, Zahn is a tooth. Zahn works with lots of other nouns like Zahnspange, Zahnpaste, Zahnbürste, Zahnschmerzen. Yeah, so you sometimes there are even created new Lego words. Some of the very literally and quite fun ones, I think, Zahnfleisch, again, another word with Zahn. So it literally means tooth meat, which is the gums. Yeah, Handschuhe, we heard that word before. So gloves, yeah, hand, shoes for your hands. Another nice German word is Kummerspeck, so sorrow bacon. So what does that mean? So it basically um, refers to the weight that you gain uh, due to emotional overeating. So when you feel sad and you tend to eat a lot and then you gain weight, that would be called Kummerspeck in German. And another kind of tattoo that was very popular in the 90s, um, in German it's called Aschgeweih. So I guess the first term um, is self-explanatory. The second is Gibai, which is antlers, yeah? So at the lower back, very popular in the 90s, this kind of tattoo would have the name Aschgeweih in German. There are also very, lots of international Lego words. Um, I'm sure you've heard them before and they're frequently used in international newspapers as well, like Doppelgänger, Bauhaus, Schadenfreude, Zeitgeist, uh, Wanderlust, Orwurm, Poltergeist, even turned into a movie, Weltschmerz, or as we all know, Kindergarten as well. Um, at the moment, the longest German compound noun is Kraftfahrzeughaftpflichtversicherung, which is just um, five nouns put together. Um, and then it turns into this long German Lego word. Okay, um, so I'm not gonna give you tips on how specifically you learn German because these tips are um, very general, yeah? You can apply this to any, um, any language you wanna learn. And I think there are six um, important, um, important tips. You probably know them all, but I I'm going to mention them anyway. So when I 
mainly I only teach um, adults and I only teach um, business people. And one important thing when you learn uh, German language as an adult, you need to realize is that you're not at school anymore. So maybe we all had bad experiences at school. Maybe we were too shy to speak up. Maybe we could never remember the words. Maybe we were scared of the teacher. So one important thing we need to realize now, we're not at school anymore, yeah? We're learning the language because we want to learn the language. It's not about getting good grades anymore. It's not about passing the school year. It's just because we want to learn the language. Um, so because we want to learn the language, that leads me to my next point. We, we need to find a motivation. So if we want to learn the language, we need to know the reason why we want to learn the language, because if we have if we are motivated, we will succeed. And one very important point when you learn a language as an adult is you need to get rid of your pride. So you're going to make mistakes. And if you're constantly worried, OK, I'm going to embarrass myself then you never be able to just start speaking because you're constantly worried of making mistakes, which um, is not very helpful when you want to learn a language. When you want to learn a language, of course, you all know that input is crucial. Uh, so it's not enough um, just um, looking at the book like once a week for 10 minutes. It's um, the more is more. That's the rule in language learning. So um, be consistent and ideally make it a routine. And of course, the last one is be patient and don't compare yourself to others, yeah? So language learning is a process, it will take time. Um, and yes, very important, there are no magical tricks. So if somebody's gonna tell you, okay, how to learn a language, how to be fluent in a month, it's not gonna happen. Language learning takes time. And very important, um, don't be afraid because people appreciate the effort more than the accuracy. Yeah, also when you speak German, just um, talk to people. Okay, um, let's move on to the German language quiz. Um, so I'm gonna have some expressions in German and I give you three answers and you can guess the meaning. Um, I would really appreciate it if the German native speakers of you who are joining the session would not um, give the answers, but um, maybe the ones who are not German native speakers. Um, just feel free to speak up. Yes, yeah? so unmute yourself and tell me the answer if you know the answer. So what does it mean when somebody in German says er ist blau? So literally he's blue. Is he drunk? Is he sad or is he old? He's sad. Yes, you would think so, but it's uh, the wrong answer. So um, he is drunk. So in German, it would be. I mean... thought it was old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought it was sad, yeah. <laughs> so um, yes, I know in English um, he's sad, but in German, if somebody's blue, um, he's drunk. So maybe uh, hopefully he had a good time or she had a good time because the answer is he's drunk, yeah? What does it mean when somebody in German says, er hat einen Vogel, he has a bird, literally. Funny, crazy, tired. Probably crazy. Yeah, sehr gut, crazy. So he's crazy. So if somebody has a bird in German, um, this person is a bit crazy. Um, it's usually together with this gesture, like this, yeah? Very popular gesture, especially when you're driving. So um, you can see a lot that people are going to point to each other like this. Also very commonly used in a question form. So hast du einen Vogel? Yeah. And then again, pointing this. Okay. Next one. So we stick to the animals. So er hat einen Kater. He has a cat, literally. More precisely, he has a male cat. So what does that mean? He's hungover, broke, or he's in love? Hangover? Yes, they're good, they're good. Yeah, hangover. Um, I realized that um, I was told in lots of languages, actually, an animal is used in, in order to describe when uh, somebody's hangover. I, I thought it was in love because in Serbia, uh, if you have that somebody has a cat, it means that he has like a very good looking woman. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, that's why I thought so. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. 
Yeah, are there any other examples if anybody's here and in your language um, you use an animal as well? Would be great if you could let us know now. No? Any other examples? Maybe in Spanish, my, my mother tongue, uh, my mother language, it means that uh, you have bad luck. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. You have bad luck. Okay. There's uh, something in English. I never really understood it, to be honest, but um, when someone has an addiction, they talk about having a monkey on their back. Ah, okay. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> okay, I've never heard that before. Yeah. So lots, um, lots of animals used for certain expressions. Okay. Um, a very common word used in German language is the word sausage, wurst. So what does it mean when somebody German says, does this mir wurst? Yeah, that makes no sense. I don't care. That's great. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, say yeah. I don't care. Say good. Okay, why is that? I don't care. It's because when you look at a normal common sausage, it looks the same on both ends. So um, if basically somebody says to you, um, would you like pizza or spaghetti for dinner? And you say, mir wurst. Yeah, you can even shorten it. You can just say, mir wurst. It means it's both the same to me. I really don't care. Yeah, it's a very common expression used. Um, and yeah, it's a fun expression. Like, I think it is. Is it more like, um, I don't care or I don't mind? Um, it's both, to be honest. Yeah, it's both. Yeah, you can um, use it in both ways. Um, yes, I can see that there is a hand raised. Uh, yeah, I'd like to add to this expression. There are actually two theories around it. The one you just mentioned. And the other one is a little more disgusting and goes back to the ages, where there was still vegetation in Germany. And they had to best utilize whatever part of the animal. So after all, in lungs, heart, kidney, and other innards, it all ended up in a sausage. So after all, it doesn't really matter. People don't really care what a sausage is like, as they know it just um, contains any part of the animal. Yes, that's a, that's a, another explanation where this... Yeah, yeah, but I also know about the one you mentioned. That's actually some dispute. Um, and being a vegetarian myself, I always like to avoid this explanation, but thank you very much for giving this explanation. <laughs> okay. It's very true that, um, like, in most sausages, um, you don't really know what's in it. So, yes, it's very true. This is another very good explanation. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and I'd like to end this session because then um, we, maybe there are going to be some questions with one of my um, most favorite quotes about languages. So every new language is an open window that shows a new view of the world and expands your attitude towards life. So please go out there and uh, learn as many languages as possible and don't be afraid to learn German. I know it has a certain reputation, but it can be a fun language. Um, so please start learning languages, um, and especially German. So do you have any questions? If yes, please feel free to ask me anything. I have a question, like how can I pronounce the German A, like the letter? Yeah, it's a very open letter, uh, danke, A, ah, danke. If it's at the beginning of a word, apfel, yeah, A. Ah. No, I mean the German R, like the... Oh, the, the German R. Oh, sorry. I said, yes. Sorry. The German R. Oh, yes. Oh, the German R. Um, the German R is... Um, lots of people have problems with it because the German R, you don't roll the German R, yeah? Your tongue is not involved. It's back there. So when you say the German R, you basically feel it back there. Um one way of learning the German R is basically you take a sip of water and then you're gurgling. And that's exactly the sound you should be making when um, you want to say the German R. Yeah, you, you need to feel it back there. Um, like um, Rakete, rocket. Yeah, so you feel it back there. It's yeah here. No tongue involved. Um, like so it's it's not like French, it's different, right? Yeah, it's a bit different. Okay. 
Okay, there are other questions. Ma Vanessa, I think, was first, and then Mariana. Uh, no, you actually said what I was about to say. So when I'm teaching how to pronounce the German R, I uh, introduced the exact same hack to take a sip of water and then just start gurgling. Mm. And secondly, for those who speak French, it might be of help to know that it's phonetically the same sound. So in terms of phonetics, it's exactly the same as in French, as in rouge. The same with say rot in German. Yeah, it's still slightly different when it, when you say it, but it's it's phonetically the same sound. Yes, you're right. Um, I, to, I, like to, to, I mean, of course, there's some variation. Uh, Mariana. Yes. Hi. I would like to know uh, three things. If you could recommend us like some singers, bands in order to learn German uh, because of the pronunciation that could be clear or tongue twisters or and also like some series that you think it could work, it could help or something. Yes. OK, let's start with the series. So it, it depends how um, how advanced your German is already you are already um what I always think works the best if you're not super advanced yet is um watch like watch a series in German that you know by heart yeah so uh, thanks to Netflix uh, we can usually change the uh, language so if you've seen every single episode of Friends just um you know what's going on um, so watch the German, uh, watch friends in German and use the German subtitles. Yeah. So sometimes when they speak in German or in any language, it's difficult to understand them. And then it helps um, when you can also read the German word. It makes it easier to understand. Um, if you really advance already, there are lots and lots of um, shows on Netflix or Amazon or whatever. Um, that are really good as well. It depends what kind of genre really you like. Um, but and um, how how helpful it is to watch uh, some TV series that is doubled in German already, but to choose, uh, for example, another language that we are already fluent uh, with, like for example English or whatever. Do you find it helpful? Um, yes, it, I, it it's definitely helpful because it it is um, you it helps with your understanding. So you can um, you you get more used to the sounds. You hear people um, how how certain words are pronounced, how it sounds in German. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely helpful. The, the only problem is that we tend then to mainly read the subtitles rather than um, really listen to the words. Yeah. So that's why I sometimes um, I usually suggest that people if they're that, that, that they listen to it in German and have German subtitles if they're not total beginners if they're total beginners yes of course that's going to be difficult but if you already have like a, a, a an average level like or like A2 for example I would really suggest that you watch it in German and the subtitles then what I also can recommend is there are plenty of podcasts like um, on uh, Spotify, for example, Deutsche Welle or Coffee Table. Um, you find lots of good um, um, podcasts on Spotify. Um, there is also um, a German magazine, which is just for learning languages, learning German, which is called Deutsch Perfekt. And when you look at their website, they always have certain articles as well um, that you can read for free. You can do certain like quizzes or you can listen to certain things online as well, but you can buy it in, in certain shops. Um, I, they, you can usually buy it at international airports and train station, which is, and it's called Deutsch Perfekt. Um, or you can just, um, yeah, order it online. Um, there are plenty of good songs if you, um, if you have Spotify, type in Deutsche Poesie, for example, you get lots of beautiful German songs. There are um, lots of German singers that have really good songs. Um, it, it, again, it really depends. Yeah, Rammstein, as I see in the chat. Yeah, Rammstein, I mean, everybody knows Rammstein. I must say, I do use Rammstein in my German lessons every now and then because um, everybody knows those songs. And you can do learn, you can learn quite um, 
some good songs. For example, Du Hast, I always use Du Hast, yeah, the song, because it's actually a clever combination of the pastens and German, German pastens, and it plays with words because everybody thinks Du Hast means you hate, but then it goes on, Du Hast mich gefragt. So that's actually the German past tense. So it's quite a clever combination. Du hast mich gefragt und ich habe nichts gesagt. Ja, sehr gut. And also because it's very slow song, so it's kind of easy to sing. <laughs> yeah, true, very true. Yeah, Mark Forster, Tim Bensko, Max Giesinger. Yes, very true. Um, lots of those songs. Um, whatever you like, German rap. But as soon as you have Spotify, type in German songs, you'll get a long list. And um, you'll find good songs. And it always helps to listen to songs because if you like the singer, again, then you have a certain motivation to really want to know the words, learn the words, and that helps. Yes, thank you so much for your advice. Sehr gerne, sehr gerne. Thank you very much for listening to me. And um, yes, um, if you have any questions, this is my email, just feel free to email me. And if not, have a lovely weekend and have fun learning German. Bye.